Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are doing another example of pure bending in reinforced concrete. In this case, it is a slab, so previously we've been just looking at beams, but a slab basically works the same way uh, with this type of problem. So we have evenly spaced rebar or uh, steel rods running down the length of the slab. They're each 150 millimeters away from each other. And the actual width of the slab doesn't matter because uh, we're saying that we're applying four kilonewton meters uh, of uh, bending moment of pure bending uh, per 0 0.3 meters width of the slab. So for every 0 0.3 meters, basically this distance here, we're applying 4 kilonewton meters. So this slab could be as wide as we want, and uh, that actually just usually leads to a lot of confusion anyways, uh, but basically we're just going to break this into a 300 millimeter wide section and we're going to analyze it, and then uh, yeah, the actual width of it is basically irrelevant, so don't get hung up on that. All right, so let's get started here. We know that we have ES, the modulus of elasticity of steel and concrete. So what we want to do is we want to find our ratio N. So we have N is going to be equal to ES over EC. This is the same as we've been doing in the previous videos because what we want to do is we want to transform the steel section into an equivalent area with modulus of elasticity equal to that of concrete. So 200 over 25 is going to be n equals 8. And I did say we're looking at so 4 kilonewton meters per 0 0.3 meters width of slab. So basically we're looking at a cross section of the slab that, let's draw it on, we're basically going to have um, a piece of steel there and then a half a piece of steel like that and then another half a piece of steel like that, right? And this would be basically if this is 0 0.3 meters, then that's exactly what we're getting, right? Because these are spaced along the center lines. So that means that we have one full plus two halves. So our number of steel rods per 0 0.3 meters is going to be two. So when we look for our area of steel, which we're going to transform in a second, it will be two times pi r squared. Right, and this is the area of steel per 0 0.3 meters. So we just get 628 millimeters squared. All right, so let's go and draw our transformed section now. So we know that we're going to have some part of the cross-section uh, of concrete in compression, and then the, the steel rods is, are basically going to take all of the tension, so we can go and draw on our, uh, our neutral axis, maybe like this. I can't line that up very well. All right, so let's label this. This is our neutral axis, and uh, if this is new to you, just go back and watch the previous videos where we discuss how this works. Uh, by now, I'm assuming that you've seen those and that, uh, that this is all good. So let's draw on some, some dimensions here. So in the previous videos, we call the height x. We know the distance to the centroid, because this is a rectangle, is going to be x over 2. Um, the width here is going to be 300 millimeters and this distance from the neutral axis basically to the center of this area, the center line of those steel rods was uh, 120 minus x, right? And that came from this measurement, 120 minus x uh, because this distance from the top down to here is 120 and this distance is x so that's where that comes from. And, uh, and then the area here, NAS, is equal to 8 times AS, which was 628 millimeters squared, times 628 millimeters squared, and that is 5,024 millimeters squared equals. So what we want to do now, if you remember from the previous videos, is we want the moments of area to cancel because this top bit is all in compression because it's entirely above the neutral axis. Uh, this bottom area down here is all in tension and basically we just want those to cancel out to make sure that we're still in static equilibrium. So the expression for that is we'll take the areas times their distance of to the from the neutral axis to the centroids of those areas. So for the top part we have uh, the dimension for the area is x times 300 millimeters times that distance which is x over 2 
and then we could say this is equal to the other side or we could subtract it and, uh, and set that equal to zero. So let's do that. So the area is actually 5,024 millimeters squared times uh, the distance there is 120 minus x. And that is all equal to zero. And again, if you if this is seeming odd to you, just go back and watch the previous videos. There's a couple that lead into this video. Um, so let's clean this up. So we have 150x squared. Um, this will be, we can, ex we can expand this out. So this will be plus 5,024x, and that's minus 602,000. 880, which is all equal to zero. So again, if you're just doing homework, just throw this into Wolfram, but if you're on a test, then you will have to use a quadratic equation. And you'll find that x is equal to 48.8, uh, that is millimeters. Cool, so that's that distance there. That's 48.8 millimeters, great. And that means that 120 minus x, that's going to be equal to 71, so that's, well, that's 100. 20 minus 48.8, that's equal to 71.2 millimeters. All right, so now what we want to do is now that we have all of the geometry, we want to find the moment of inertia of the transformed cross section. Using the expression, uh, the moment of inertia is equal to one third base times, well, b x cubed, that's base times height cubed, basically this dimension times this dimension, and this is in the back of any mechanics of materials textbook for the moment of inertia of a rectangle about some axis that is touching one side of it. So basically we add the moment of inertia of this part plus the moment of inertia of the other part, um, which is NAS times D minus X, where D was that uh, 120 millimeters all squared. And this part basically is, uh, because we don't actually assign any particular geometry to this shape, we just care about the area. That's just the area component of the, uh, um, for the moment of inertia, about some area that's centered this distance away from the neutral, neutral axis without actually yeah, caring about the actual geometry of it. And this comes from that parallel axis theorem where we had a times uh, d squared. Well, this is the area part and this is the distance from the axis part that's squared. So that's where that comes from. So we add up the moment of inertia of uh, both of those parts and we'll get the moment of inertia for the entire transformed cross section. All right, so we can go and fill this out because we actually have all of the information. So we have one third uh, base was uh, 300 millimeters times uh, the x value which was 48.8 millimeters and that is cubed. And at this point, it is a good idea to actually use the units because we want to make sure that we're ending up with moment, uh, moment of inertia in units of millimeters to the power of four. And if you don't get that, then you'll know that you've done something wrong. So here we have NAS, we have that down there, that is 5,000. All right, I gotta plug in, one, give me one second. All right, got that cleared up and plugged in. So we were at 5,000 and 24 millimeters squared times d minus x squared. So d minus x was 71.2 millimeters. So 71.2 millimeters, and that was all squared. So we are going to get units of meters to the power of four right across the board. So if we just simplify this a little bit, we're going to get, uh, this is equal to 37.09 times 10 to the negative six meters to the power of four. All right, and from here, now what we want to do is we're able to calculate the max stress in the concrete, which was going to be the max compressive stress in the member. And we'll use the formula where we have our max stress for concrete is going to be MC over I. So let's check out what our units were for MC and I. If we go back up to the top, M is four kilonewton meters. C, the max distance to those uh, most extreme fibers is going to be 48.8 millimeters, and I was over there. So we get this is equal to 5.26 megapascals or MPA. So that is the max stress that we get in the concrete, and it's also the max compressive stress in the whole member. 
All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to find the max stress in the steel, which is going to be the max tensile stress in the member. And we're going to use the expression where we just have the max stress in steel is equal to N times MC over I. And if you remember why we have this N in here is because this is the transformed region. We transformed basically the steel uh, into uh, an area of modulus of elasticity which is equal to uh, the concrete. So we did that by multiplying the area by that factor n. The factor was 8. And when we do that, because stress is force per area, if we artificially kind of calculated this to have an area that's 8 times bigger than what it actually is, then that would reduce the max stress uh, in this calculation by 8. So we just have to bring that back in and this will give us the actual value. So we have 8 times, uh, the moment was 4,000 newton meters, um, and then C in this case was 71.2 millimeters, that is the distance to the extreme fibers from the neutral axis, so that is 0 0.0712 meters, and then we'll drop in the, module, or the moment of inertia there, which was 37 0.09 times 10 to the negative 6 meters to the power of 4 and if you just run that in the calculator you get this is 61.4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared right again we have the same units as before and so we just get 61.4 mega pascals alright so there we go we did calculate the max stress in the steel the max stress in the concrete um, and we did that based on this slab that is uh, of an arbitrary width basically but we know the applied moment per per width so uh, yeah don't get thrown off by that if you ever see a problem like this it's often in textbooks or tests um, this is the method that you use to solve it and uh, all right there we go see you guys in the next video